Hi, my name is EJ Massa. So I was walking through a Home Depot the other day, you know, looking for a hammer, maybe. I don't know. Who cares? I saw a red Weber kettle grill, limited edition, and it was discounted. Probably because the average Amazon reviews were three and a half stars, which is basically unsellable. And in those Amazon reviews, they were saying that the paint was inconsistent and blobby and, and, and patchy in some places. And they were blaming China because Weber Kettle Grills are made in China now. But I didn't care about all that because it was red and pretty. And it was discounted. So I bought it. Hey, it's limited edition. It says right there. If I don't buy it now, I'll probably never get it. It's limited. That's what the word means. My son doesn't really need to go to college. I went to college and, you know, I just make mac and cheese reviews. Did I need to go to college for that? Maybe. Maybe. Anyways, after assembling this beauty, and it is indeed beautiful, I didn't notice any of the paint imperfections that early reviews complained about, so it may have been an early manufacturing error. Or maybe, since this kettle is a bright red, so all the imperfections are really easy to notice, unlike the darker colors Weber usually sells, which, you know, it can obscure or hide those little imperfections. I mean, if I look really hard, I can see some paint inconsistencies, like on this handle part. That doesn't really bother me. It's a striking grill, and totally a conversation starter. It looks like delicious red candy. I always wanted that retro red color, you know, like the kind of you'd see in, in these 1950s looking cartoons, and it hasn't been widely available in a couple decades. So EJ Massa, you filthy prostitute, why did you buy a Weber Kettle Grill? You already have a Weber Kettle Grill. Look, I've seen it in your video. It's right there. Yeah, but this one's red. It's pretty. Plus it has a few features that they've added to Weber Kettle Grills since I got my black one many years ago. Like a heat sink on the vent. It won't burn my precious little hands. The ashtray is a little easier to remove by just squeezing the handle instead of turning it. And instead of a hanger inside the lid, you have this built-in caddy, which is way more stable. Now these features are pretty standard on Weber performers from the past few years, so they might not be new to you, but hey, they're new to me. Also near the thermometer is this limited edition decal. It's very important. Important. I also like that the wheels are slightly different and look cool. The grill overall looks cooler. I only care about looks. It makes the food taste better. It tastes better when you have a pretty red grill. It comes with a hinged grate, which is a good grate. You might even call it a great grate. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No! There's this piece of metal which wasn't on my old version of the grill, and it does something. I assume it makes it better. So let's take this beauty for a spin. And in the process, I'm gonna do a little experiment with the Sloan's here that I've always wanted to do, and that's to see if lump charcoal works as good as briquettes. My assumption being that the briquettes are easier to control, but the lump charcoal provides a better taste. And of course, I have some baby back ribs prepared with the Memphis Dust Rub. So we'll see how we do. First I drop the slow and sear in, and man, it's tarnished and dirty from use, and totally stands out in the brand new Weber. But grills are meant to be used, so time to fuck it up with some fire. So I lit a small chimney of Royal Oak Lump, dumped it in the corner of the slow and sear, and filled the rest of the reservoir with unlit Royal Oak. And of course there's hot water in the water reservoir. When the grill gets up to temp, I put the ribs on. As a side note, I love the little probe that came with my Thermoworks smoke. It doesn't take up much space, so there's more room for food on the grate. And I need more food. More food. Now the best part about the Weber Red Kettle is admiring it in the setting sun while it whispers sweet, delicious smelling smoke to you. It brings a tear to my eye. A motion graphics tear. I'm dead inside. Anyways, the rest of the cook is similar to my quicker ribs video, with a wrapping of the ribs when it gets to the right color. Except this time, I'll be saucing them with this barbecue sauce sent to me by fans Abby and Ryan from Ohio. This barbecue sauce apparently has beer in it. How did you know I liked booze? <laughs> I don't even think it's something I've even mentioned on this show. After unwrapping the ribs, I slather them in the sauce and put them back on the pit to caramelize. And then it's time to taste the ribs and see if this sauce is any good. Now let's go to my past self who was filming the B-roll at the time to see how this sauce tastes. Thanks post-production EJ. Well first I'm going to taste a little bit of the sauce. It's very ketchupy. It, you know, it kind of reminds me of the whiskey barbecue sauce from allrecipes.com that I made for my whiskey barbecue episode. Tastes very similar to that actually. So let me just try the, it, try it on the rib. 
Mm. It's like a homemade barbecue sauce. And um, it's very similar to that allrecipe.com. Maybe a little more subdued than that. So good job, Great Lakes Brewing, whatever, what is it? So good job, Great Lakes Brewing Company. Great barbecue sauce. Back to you, post-production EJ. Thanks, past EJ. You know, he reminds me of a younger, more handsome version of me. Now, as far as the lump charcoal and the slow and sear, I actually didn't notice much of a flavor difference between the lump and the briquettes, at least in this indirect style of cooking. Recently, I made ribs in the pit barrel cooker, and I actually used lump charcoal instead of briquettes in that, and that, since the, the juices were dripping onto the coals and providing more flavor, that had a significant flavor difference where the lump charcoal was better. But in this indirect style with the slow and sear, there was little difference. And my other assumption that the lump charcoal would be harder to control, that didn't end up being really that true either. It was actually pretty easy to control, just like the briquettes. The only difference being that there was less ash to clean up after the lump charcoal. So with the slow and sear, with indirect cooking, I don't see much difference between the fuel types, so just choose whatever you are more comfortable with. And for the Red Weber kettle, well, it's just a Weber kettle. It worked exactly as it's supposed to. I didn't notice any flaws in the enamel of my red kettle, but if that's a concern to you, I went to Home Depot, you know, I bought it, I opened the box, and I, I made sure there was no imperfections in the parking lot. So, I mean, you can do that. If you're buying it online, you don't really have that luxury, so I guess it's a gamble there. And once again, I have to say that the Weber kettle combined with Sloan's here is probably one of the, the best experiences just both grilling and smoking I've ever had. Yeah, it's not gonna be as efficient as a Kamado, but hey, it's cheaper. And look, mine's red. Did I mention that? Anyways, I'll put links to all the gear I used in this video in the description below. So check that out. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.